Hi everyone, this is Jolie from Happy Heart Arts and I am a painter and drawer, many visual arts that I do. So anyways, welcome back to my last um, live stream art demo art talk as a part of the market, July market here. And so um, yeah, so I'll begin by showing a little bit more of what I do, what I've been doing for the last past year. Um, being in a different place. I've been trying different things. Um, going back to some old things, but trying some new things. So uh, one of the things is I tried toned paper, which I hadn't done since school. So I bought a pad of toned paper, which was great for doing charcoals. This is a pastel charcoal drawing here, um, which I liked. I tried this a couple different times. Um, and also was trying to, I wanted to be able to work on figure without working on a whole figure at times. So like this, so I looked up images of broken sculptures and um, yeah, so that's what this is. Um, and also it's going back to a medium that I hadn't used in a while. Most of the pastel, not the charcoal. So yeah, this was fun experiment. I did a couple of these earlier this past year. That's just one sample. Um, I tried a new thing called um, oil painting paper. Oh, I shouldn't, that's too bright, sorry. And um, it wasn't great with paint. Um, I, I probably needed gesso it. Probably better if I gessoed, which have been like, um, gesso is like acrylic based um, paint like thing. It's usually white or you can get in black. And it helps to make it less the surface, especially if it's canvas, on gesso canvas, um, if you're doing it yourself, it makes it less absorbent. So that way, you know, it'll beat up on it. All right. Um, and then you can work it. So anyway, so this is that paper that um, was still too absorbent for my oil paints. I tried some water-based, water-soluble oil paints. That was another new medium I tried this year. Tried this new paper. Wasn't great on that, so I ended up doing a, I think this is a charcoal and pastel. So worked nicely. I like that was something else new I tried this year. Um, I tried this thing called a jelly print. Uh, yeah, jelly printing. It's, uh, it's great for monotypes and backgrounds. I'm realizing it's great for backgrounds. So I hoping I could use it to um, make mono printed abstracts or combine a little bit of charcoal into it. Sometimes things work great, sometimes not so much. But this is what the jelly plate looks like. You um, paint on it. You can draw on it a little bit, nothing sharp. And then you light flat first, and then you paint on it. And um, you're able to put your paper on top of that and then you pull off the design all at one time. So um, I tried it with scrap paper and um, I'm probably gonna buy some nice printmaking paper, but I tried it with um, with my perp that red paper, that toned paper, I tried it with that. I tried making prints with copy paper, um, drawing paper, mixed media paper. So I'll show you some of those results. Not the ones that I didn't really like. <laughs> Some that I thought middling, but um, here's one. Um, I put rubber bands down, pulled off a print, and then um, it left over these, had these leftover shadows from the rubber bands. And then I put some clear greenish yellow paint on top and then put the paper and then pulled it. So that's one that worked. Um, this is one that I did on regular sketch paper, uh, mixed media paper, um, thin. and. Um, I think I um, put just purple paint down and then another time I put, uh, when it was dry, I went back to my um, jelly plate and put blue and green on it, use my, um, use my, um, let's see, my um, spatula to create little shapes in it and then put it back down for a second time and then fold it. So this is a multi-layer. I kind of like that. Here's one where... Um, I painted directly on um, the surface of the jelly plate and um, all in black and then when it dried I used a blunt end of a, a tiny thing I think it was my paintbrush pulled off all the all the, the purple areas and then um, covered it so yeah so the black pulled off all the areas like here stuff like that I know mirroring really badly all the purple that was all blank. And then um, once I made my little design, I painted it with purple paint right on top, put the paper on top of that, pulled it back, and then, yeah, 
I'll show maybe in a future I'm, I'm going to be doing um, some art demos in August so maybe I'll demonstrate that then but right now I'm not too happy with gel plating gel plate printing so but anyways I'll show you a few more examples this is one that I did earlier also this is slightly tougher mixed media paper a little thicker I should say um, I also did some abstracts normally I do them on canvas but I've been tried them on paper this year um, so this is a combination of painting using the gesso to paint so this is that paper again um, I think I just it with white taped a bunch of pages together adjusted it white and then um, I used white paint and then went over it with some more paint using my spatulas and then I think I tried to jelly press um, some texture and some characters on top of it um, yeah these are the ones I like the ones I didn't like you don't get to see <laughs> all right um, yeah oh and then I think it's some canvas um, there is an acrylic on canvas you know the funny thing about abstracts well I guess this is up sometimes you can't tell Ooh, which way should it go Ta -da. all right but this feels something about the weight oh yeah because everything is so down at the bottom it feels like this is the bottom has the extra space here so it has a weight to it um, so that makes it feel like yeah that's the bottom all right and here's another abstract this one I did on a stretch canvas trying something new um, oops there we go that's what it looks like so yeah so even though I've been painted a lot I did find a little time now and then to try my hand at painting Oh, I'd mentioned, I think at the, not the last one, but one on Friday when I did an art demo that I'd done a workshop. Oh, yeah, when I did art demo, I had mentioned I'd done a workshop um, trying to get some of my groove back. And I was trying to do oil paintings. I did water soluble oil paints was something new for me to try. I tried a lot of new stuff um, since I wasn't really acrylic painting like I normally do. Um, so I did this workshop that was the plain air, which means outdoors, painting outdoors and um with a palette knife which i do use and actually bought some nice fancy palette knives also um so i want to try doing like an outdoor landscape workshop thing using palette knives so anyways this is i forgot to show this so here is what i made um i started it outdoors um and i finished it when i got back home um a little little bit of color every day for about a week but uh, but i did start this outdoors it came out really great um, this did. I really like this piece. And I've, where I live now has beautiful gardens outside. And I've tried, tried it a couple, tried it a couple times on my own and wasn't quite that happy with it. Oh well, life goes on. So, I will, I will be doing what I've been doing for the last two days. And I'll once more be one of the, another new medium. Like I said, I've tried oil painting, gel printing, different papers, um, gouache. So, I'm once more doing the gouache. Um, I really like the gouache. I'm not a watercolorist, not a fan of watercolor, not a fan of landscape, I think, either, but <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but yeah, I really like doing the oil painting. Um, I know I posted it at the bottom, but this turned out, this is the one I was working on yesterday, and I really like this. Um, I know I talked about not putting teeth in, cause, um, but I actually did. I'm going to try. You can't see it too well. But if you look closely, you can see indications of teeth in there. Woohoo. So I did that after I was done. That made me feel good, you know, not letting something that um, intimidates me stop me from trying. So I just went very slowly and gently. And I did it in pencil. I did not do it with the gouache. <laughs> the one I did a few days ago, um, Thursday, she still doesn't have teeth, but I'm okay with that. Um, this one that I did on Friday, um, I still wasn't happy with her. So what I did was, um, I actually kind of redrew it. Her eyes are crooked, but I redrew it yesterday, trying to get a better feel for it. So I like this drawing better, but her eyes are a little off. Um, it still looks nice. I mean, overall, I really like the drawing. Um, I know I used, I did a drawing on my watercolor paper. Aye, aye, aye. All right, so I'm going to do a new piece today. I found another um, portrait. 
Um, all right, so I was trying to decide. So the first time I did, like, yes, I did a person with a very um, somber, serious face. And yesterday I did a nice, huge smile. Woohoo, I'm so glad I did the smile. Um, and I was, I'm debating, depends upon how I feel on how expressive this guy, I found, anyway, it's a person doing a very expressive face. So I got someone with a serious look, you know, looking off and looking serious. And I was like, ah, I still don't feel like doing serious. So um, I found an expressive face. The person's kind of coughing, you know, how people can, you know, raise that one eyebrow up. So I found a guy who's raising his eyebrow up. Um, no smile, but you know, expressive expression. So. We will see how this goes. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. I um, I'm always worried about. Okay, will this work? Will it look good? Yeah, I'm always worried about that. All right, let me readjust here a little bit and um, turn this down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So I'll tip this down. Let's see. I got this tipped here a little bit so that way. I realized a lot, a lot of times my eyes get off because I forget to tip my paper to get a better angle on it. Um, or maybe I'm not tipping my reference, but I'm going to tip it here a little bit and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Mm, might be making his head too small, so I'm going to have to readjust. I guess he doesn't need to have all that much hair. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess the other thing is I'm doing a guy. Yeah, I guess the last two times I was doing woman, which I think I find easier to make. Um, I must admit I did do a nice little drawing yesterday of a guy, um, somber faced of course, that I very much abstracted. Abstract does not mean non-representational, but a lot of us, that's what we think it means when you say something's abstract. But abstract just means that it's I think non-representational non abstract, non-representational, that's usually what we mean by, when most people think about abstract, that's what they think of is abstract. But abstract is more than that. It is basically anytime you can simplify something. Um, so you might have a very detailed version and then that's like representing a person but a more simplified, like think of a cartoon character or a comic book, but you still recognize, you know, like Hello Kitty. She is, I know they say that Hello Kitty is not a cat, but she looks like a cat. But so anyway, but because of the circle and the triangles that are for ears um, and the little dot and the little whiskers, I guess she doesn't have whiskers. Maybe she does. But those little bits, that's abstract. Basically the circle and the triangles, basically simplifying it to a more simple form, that is, makes it abstract. And you're still able to recognize that it, what it is, you know? And so, um, yeah, so it's, and there's all levels, degrees, you know, of what, how abstract is something is. Um, but I use Hello Kitty because she's a more severe abstracted version of, of a cat. I know. I'm using Hello Kitty because yes, people think she's a cat. Woohoo! I still don't know why they don't think. I still don't know why the creator said she's not a cat. <laughs> Anyways, I love Hello Kitty. I don't know if you guys noticed my hair wrap is a cat. It is Hello Kitty. It's not a cat. It's Hello Kitty. Yes, I love Hello Kitty. I think she's very fun. I was given a Christmas gift of Hello Kitty. Uh, Hello Kitty t-shirt, excuse me, and woohoo, I was a very happy camper. I don't have, I must admit, I don't have tons of Hello Kitty floating around my house. I'd love to say, oh, I have tons of Hello Kitty. I don't. Um, I just think she's cool. All right. Let's see here. I don't want to focus in, I feel like I'm focusing too much on this guy's neck, shirt, that's it. I'm focusing too much on the shirt. That's not going to be the main part of my piece. No, it's, it's, it's going to be um, his face, which I haven't drawn at all yet. Ah, all right. Let's see here. 
Um, hmm. Yeah. The thing I did wrong the other day. I forgot to make sure to place where I wanted my eyes to be at. It's funny because, like, even though I talked about it on Friday about making sure to line up and draw lightly, which I did draw lightly <laughs> for that drawing I showed you, the one that's right here, um, it still got off. Um, and that happens. Um, not everything is a, is perfect. I'm always still learning, always still trying, always coming back, and I always make that note, okay, yeah, my eyes were off again. They look great. They're just not lined up well, um, or at least not lined up according to what the picture looks like, uh, or it's too much, or it's too off, you know, for it to be okay. I remember um, you can always come back and try it again because you make that note to yourself like, oh, yeah, I messed up on the eyes. Let me pay attention to that alignment, you know, um, that's what I always think is really good, like, yeah, I might have messed up, but I'm going to come back and try it again, and I'll just make sure to pay attention to what I did, so that way, um, I get better on that alignment. I must, I must admit, though, think about that alignment, or just being slightly, oh, mine wasn't slightly off, um, I was listening to a YouTube video a few years ago from a young artist and um, they were noting the fact that their eyes were slightly off. Um, I don't think it was noticeable really, but they were okay with that because I forgot their reason why. They had a really good reason that made sense to me about um, it being off, probably because I guess not everybody's eyes are really perfectly aligned. There was that. Um, but they also thought that by not having it perfectly aligned, it causes your eye to do something, to um, to look. Your eyes keep going back and forth because um, it can't rest. It knows something's off, but it can't tell what's off. Uh, mine was too severe, so yeah, you can tell it's off, but if it's just slightly off, it will cause your eye to move and to keep looking back and forth. It turns out, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but it turns out that the reason why people's eyes um, for the Mona Lisa, <laughs> yes, that principle is at work in the Mona Lisa, not with her eyes. It actually deals with the background. There's the background horizon line. It turns out it's not straight. Um, if you go, like if you try to cross, yeah, I didn't realize that until I was listening to a video that was talking about the Mona Lisa and they're talking about that horizon line in the background um, it's one is broken up, but I guess it's not perfectly straight. And I thought for sure they'd say, well, it's not perfectly straight because, you know, um, the horizon line curves in the distance period. You know, if you are far enough out, you'll see that the horizon line curves. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what they were to say. No, they did not say that. It's, <laughs> it's because the horizon line curves. I was like, what? No, they actually said, um, it was intentional by Da Vinci and um, it makes the eye, your your mind's going to notice it but not recognize that something's off and it gets your eye to look back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, it makes you watch look longer. Yeah, it's, but yeah, he said, it, they said it was intentional. Um, I was like, that's pretty cool. So, anyways, but yeah, so that young lady whose video I was watching that was talking about drawing, and um, she said, don't always worry about things being perfectly aligned, at least with the eyes. She was like, that's cool, because it will get the eyes to do, the human eye, to go back and forth trying to figure it out. And then, of course, as it looks back and forth, get more engaged with your piece of work, you know, going, okay, what's going on? Um... And now she thought it was more interesting too, but I was like, that's cool. Hmm. I'm not liking this expression. Oof, it's too extreme. It's too, um, hmm. <laughs> this dude doesn't look scary in real life, but oh boy, oh boy, am I drawing a scary looking face. So in case you ever wondered, so do artists ever have bad days? Well, yes, we can have bad days. 
um, with our drawings. Um, and I might have made this too caricature. Whoopsie. Um, oh yeah, he probably also needs more of a nose. All right, whoops. <laughs> As I caricature his nose really badly now. Yikes. Cartoon divider. All right. Um, hmm. I just realized I curved his nose too much. Yeah, 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 these shadows are terrible. All right, let's see here. So yeah, I can definitely tell. I think he uses quite a loose, um, what do you say, loose um, hand positioning. So my everything might be a little, well, tighter, not tighter, more, yeah, it's more precise-ish, my bad. Um, like I said, not everybody has a great drawing day or whatever, or not the results that you really want. Um, I think because this guy's expression is so extreme, at least with his eyes, I am, <laughs> I'm actually drawing like, oh, this looks totally different from what I was drawing the other day. Though I must admit, I haven't yet um, done the wash yet part. So there is that. But, um, Yeah, I definitely made his expression very extreme here. Um, very, yeah, oddish on my part. Um, yeah, he's definitely more cartoon defied than <laughs> I'd intended. Um, which I find very interesting. Yeah, I must admit the drawing I did yesterday I think I did that sketchbook. Um, here, I'll show it to you real quick. Um, he's abstracted-ish. He still very much can tell it's a guy. I use Posca pens. Another new thing I've played with, but um, uh, yeah, let's just do it this way. Slightly abstracted, not too much. Um, yeah. And then I painted the background. So pencil, sorry, pencil and then the Posca marker, which is a type of paint marker. So that's that. Um, this is a little bit more cartoonified because his eyes are very um, extreme, <laughs> which is what I like. But now I'm going, oh, he doesn't look very natural. Um, and it's funny because I'm working from a photograph. <laughs> This guy's eyes really are doing this type of extreme. Um, what? Eh? What? What? What you talking about, Willis? Yeah, if you guys have ever know what I'm talking about, that's what. Anyway. Um, all right, those of a certain age will know where that comes from, and those who watch reruns will also know. <laughs> Is what you talking about, Willis? All right. Let's see here. Um, see if I can fix this nose here a bit. I'm going to need some more tweaking. Mm, let's see. This needs a little shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, no tweaking. I don't like this nose shape here at the bottom. Alright, let's see. Oh, he does not have a mouth. I feel like I need to make his chin longer. Get him have fun. His mouth is closed, but I forgot he doesn't have any chin space. And I made hmm. And that's what's driving me crazy here. He doesn't have a chin. Oops, excuse me, my screen went 
I want to make sure you guys can still see brightly. My um, camera was, my computer was going to sleep there a little bit. Um, oh yeah, Mao. He needs at least, uh, let's see, here, this here. Um, hmm. I should have done that first. There we All right, so he technically isn't frowning, but you know what? It does make for more of an interesting drawing if he's frowning a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I know. Make it a little bit more in interesting. All right, let's see here. Um, to put that circle in for that chin space that does feel better let's see somewhere in this line is the line that I like um, somewhere I'll see if I can find it I might have made this too dark oops so yeah so that's probably the point where I'm going to like alrighty I need to wash out the, um, I know I put that ear down too quickly. Um, wash out a little bit of what I've done. I use with the paintbrush, wipe it away, adjust it. Um, so I want to just add a little bit more to this drawing here. Make it so it's a little, well, um, Not more um, expressionable, but it just needed fixing. I guess that's the word I need to just say. It just needed fixing. All right, let's see. The shirt was not as important. I spent too much time when I first started this drawing thinking about the stupid shirt when I needed to be thinking more about the face. Let's see. All right. Oh. Sorry, my technical pencil here. A little cheap for lines. There we go. Alrighty. Um, hmm, oh dear. This, yeah, the shirt's bad. Alrighty. I'm just going to use lines to indicate. Leave it rough. Switching to my cup. My, this is my colored pencil, but it's black, so it doesn't feel like it feels like I'm working with a regular pencil, but it's weird. Not really. Alright. Let me change this up. I might just do representate, represent, represent, not representate, I'm making up words here, my bad. Um, what would be the ear? <laughs> Ooh, this guy has a, yes he does. He actually has a hole in his ear. So you guessed it, y'all, earrings. All right, let's see. It's a little shady. All right, it's not a great ear, but it's just going to be representating what an ear would be. <laughs> representing, yep, that's all it is, is just representing. One of the coolest things I've heard since I've moved out to the East Coast and um, I get to meet artists, um, working artists and stuff like that, they live here, um, besides myself, but, I, you know, I, I knew some when I lived in Milwaukee, but, um, and with them but um, what's really cool um, that cool thing that I just recently heard several different artists actually said the same thing and they talked about mark making and you know um, the marks you know literally like the marks the shapes the designs of your your pencil makes or your charcoal makes um, yeah mark making and I was like Huh, I never thought of it that way. Um, mark making. I mean, but that's what it is. Um, but I never, I know it sounds weird, but, and to have one artist mix it, and then all of a sudden you hear another artist talk about it too. Um, I wish there's a way I could describe mark making. Um, and 
and making marks is always unique to everybody uh, with how to make mark making how to represent um, yeah it's it's just it's cool um, yeah that several artists when we were talking about art and I'm looking for like inspiration and ideas they talk about um, or like if I'm like I'm struggling with try to make you know draw an idea they also they start talking about mark making and I was like that's cool three or four different artists all said the talked about it in different conversations all with me but with different people and that just was like really cool to realize wow um, mark make mark making is important um, and being aware of your mark making and um, yeah it was just really cool to hear about and um, yeah all right let's see if I can write so this I, I dig the one over here I'll just make this a little narrower um, this one will be shadow and let's see here it's the crazy eye yeah this is the reason why I did it for the crazy eye um, try to see how abstract that I still want to keep this um, Crazy eye. I love the crazy eye. All right. Um, All righty. Okay. All right. So now I feel like I've got a nice. Um, I know. Sorry about that. Um, I love it when I see a video. Um, on YouTube and seems to be a lot of them are left-handed which is very which can be great for cameras somehow their hands are not always blocking the camera but um, so I apologize I'm right-handed <laughs> oh yeah so hopefully um, if it looks like I'm I'm left-handed I am not I am very much right-handed so yeah 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 so um, anyways I think I'm going to stop here. I think I've got, I feel like I've got a nice, this is going to be shadow-ish, but I feel like I've got a nice start on um, my drawing here. Um, I know I keep saying that, I keep tweaking. Yes, I see, yeah. So I'm going to stop. I can always come back and draw some more. That is the power of doing a gouache and um, pencil mix i'm just moving a little bit of stuff out of the way um let me flip this around so you can see what he looks like here so that's what he looks like now um yeah very very interesting oh wait i might tweak this a bit and we'll see if i can pull that down just a smidge there we go uh, I know he looks more crazy, but all right. So that's my person, slightly abstracted, um, but very expressive, which makes me go, ha, 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 ha. All right. <laughs> all right. So um, we're going to do the same color I've been doing this whole time, black. <laughs> um, we have to put some fresh black in here. And I'm going to um, use my... Um, traveling um, paintbrush yeah nylon tip here um, this bottle is full of, this handle is full of water and um, it just unscrews and you can just fill it up this is so cool you just fill it up with water to the line which I guess I've been filling up beyond the line it's a little line on here and then it just screws back on ah! and then just beautiful little cap for traveling and then of course Ta-da! So you don't lose it. You won't lose it in the car. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've, um, I'm just getting really beat up. I've only been trying to think. I think I bought the gouaches probably in November um, or so. Um, no, maybe 
November, October, and it's getting a little beat up. But like I said, I've enjoyed what I am doing with the gouache and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, sometimes if it sometimes it gets a little dry, I will um, squeeze it and it will get the tip wet, um, which is nice. Which is nice. All right. I kind of whoops. All right. <coughs> oh, excuse me for coughing here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna reactivate some of my paint here. That's turned into nice little paint trips. Um, it doesn't stick. Ah. All right, so I'm gonna start painting away. Still got my reference over here on the side so I can see where I want my shadows at. And um, you know what, I'm gonna, the darkest shadows outside his hair is right here in his eye. So might as well do that. So add some of those shadows there. And his eyebrows. Ooh, Lord. Yeah, I know. It's like, hmm, he looks angry. I don't think he's supposed to be angry, but oh well. I had another teacher who, um, would like, when you, it was a quick draw class, so, um, he was really, he was a really good teacher. Um, it helped me to build confidence um, in my um, drawing and painting. Um, he, anyway, he said. So, anyways, for a quick draw class, especially if you're doing animals, of course they're moving. So basically, you're trying to capture a pose or the animal, <laughs> or the animal, just its shape as quickly as you can. Or try to memorize it and then draw it. But he was like, especially since it was quick draw, he was like, it's not necessarily um, the perfect line, but it's your version of a lion. That's what you're drawing, you know? Um, or, yeah, or painting. And it was cool because then it was like, oh, I don't have to make draw a perfect line, but I can draw my version of a lion, you know? Um, and I can use the line that. It was, I, no, I'm saying lion, but it could have been a lion, a snake, a turtle. But I feel like the lesson must have come among the lions or the monkeys, you know, but your version of it. And, um, yeah, and then it's for your reference, you know, because we were doing it in sketchbooks, you know. And so he was like, yeah, this is for you, you know, um, for you to be able to capture and, you know, get more confident in your drawing. And um, you're not doing it for somebody else's line. It's for your line, what you want your line to look like, you know? Um, yeah, and so that just, that was one of the things that really helped. But also the fact, like, he knew, he realized. So one of the t another day, we worked with models also. And the models would hold poses for three to four minutes, three to five minutes, depending, sometimes two. But anyways, so the models were changing poses, and then you start a new sketch. Each pose, you would new, do a new drawing. But, um, so he noticed, like, you know, if we were looking really tight, but, like, as the hour would go, hours would go by, he would notice how, you know, if we were able to break through and loosen up, and if we just didn't quit, but we kept on trying. But he also noticed that when I drew in pencil, and I don't mean, like, um, this, this, you know, but I was, and I don't mean a number two, I mean like drawing pencils that are like a 2B and a 2A, not a 2A, it's an HB, but different types of pencils for, it could have been a regular little pencil, but he noticed that when I was drawing with pencil, I was not, I guess, my, my let's put it this way, the difference from when I drew with pencil and when I drew with a pen, it was night and day. You would have thought that my drawings were much tighter when I draw with pen because, yeah, it would have been much tighter. I would have been thinking more about making sure I'm drawing carefully and all this kind of stuff. But it turned out when I drew with pen, I wasn't as careful. I was more loose. Um, I would just play around trying to find that shape, which I would do with the pencil. Um, it just, <laughs> but not as much. I was actually tighter. Like, kind of like today, I was slightly, I, I didn't, like a couple of the days, I was using my, he also told us this trick, how to make sure to be a little bit, this helps you to be a little bit more loose with your pencil. But I wasn't doing that. Whoop. Hope you guys are still there. 
Yikes, my. Oh, good. I hope you guys are still there. Might have cut off for a second, but it looks like it's still recording, which is what counts. But my camera, or my, uh, not my camera, it went blank there for a quick second. So sorry about that. But that's fine. But, you know, he showed us techniques for how to stay loose. You know, this is one of the great ways to help stay loose to do a quick sketch. Um, but he noticed that, like I said, naturally most people would think that oh i would have been more tight with um a pen because with a pen you're worried about where you're putting your marks at you know um, and you can't erase them once they're there they're there so every single line counts well every single line remains <laughs> i don't think every single line counts um some will count some not so much you um just depend upon where you want to emphasize it at or redraw that over and over again but he noticed that for some odd reason I was much more relaxed when I drew with pen than when I, when I was with pencil I actually was and so it was really cool Tim was I think I mentioned him the other day it was just really I had him for multiple classes I took him for animation he's that was the first class then he taught a puppetry class he taught um, the quick draw class I probably would have taken more if I hadn't finished school, but he was one of my favorite teachers, and um, yeah, he basically just allowed us to do our own thing, but he also just gave us great pointers that helped us to just really gain confidence, at least for me, gain confidence in how I encourage you to draw all the time and showed us techniques, but just encourage you to just be confident in how you draw and how you make art, you know? Um, yeah. Um, it was, yeah, he's still one of my favorite art teachers. That's probably why I'm still talking about him. Let's see. Yeah. Over 10 years. Let's see. 13 years. Uh, I'm counting wrong. 8. 13 years. Yeah. Right that time. I was right that, that time I'm right. 13 years after I graduated. Um, and like I said, I took three classes with him when I was in school. Um, yeah, if I, I probably would have taken more. He had this one where they were working with, created an, had animation classes, like they did some stop motion, he did a stop motion class. He did, um, where they did, they created their own cartoon animations. Stop mo they could do whatever they wanted. They could have done a cartoon, they could have done stop motion. Um, I think they could have even done Flash. I don't know if we had, I don't think 3D was as huge then. But, um, but he started working with this, um, poetry, um, thing where, um, they were looking for people to take people's poems and make them come to life. And man, I would have taken that class if I'd known it had existed before I registered. <laughs> it was already taken into the semester. It was like, what? Um, yeah. He, they, those people, because then he had, they had to create characters, they did character drawing sheets, you know, expression sheets and all this kind of stuff. Um, but then they created their, cart, you know, storyboarded, created their cartoons to go with it. And then they filmed it, and then I think it was put on PBS, so. I mean, like with the animation, 2D animation class, we did storyboard and create our own characters, but. It would have been another opportunity, you know, to do that. Um, like I said, he was a really good teacher who really helped build my confidence, you know, build, help me to have confidence, you know, um, in the materials that made me comfortable, that made me comfortable as an artist that I liked using, you know. Um, yeah. I just realized I've only peeked at this guy only a few times. I'm just, I really, <laughs> I really am playing here um, which is great you know sometimes like um, you might use a drawing for a reference and then um, which and you want to make it as close as possible to what you want it to be and then sometimes um, you might just use it as a jumping off start um, and then you start making it your own thing and um, I, I don't play I usually try to do so much reference, but, and then later on, like, I'll come back to another day and I'm like being careful and, no, stop being careful. I'm just putting in what I think needs to be there. 
Um, but it, I realized today, I realized as I'm drawing in the shadows on its hair, I am doing what I want, doing what I think it needs to look like. <laughs> it might be because I put a very nice underdrawing on here. Um, that could be part of the reason. Um, and so, and I'm just not making his hair as dark. His hair is all dark. Um, by make, keeping it lighter, I'm able to still show some of the waves and the curls um, and make it my own thing, which is totally cool, especially since these eyes are their own thing. I mean, it's not that he doesn't have that expression, but it, his eyes are his own, they're my own thing now. Like I said, reference drawing, my piece. <laughs> my piece, this is my piece. Ah. Oh, I'm glad I didn't put that on his face yet. That would have been too dark for what I wanted. So, yeah, it's very... But, yeah, no, he... Um, it was a great class. We did a puppet-making class at one point. Um, I already mentioned that. But he, we did some final pieces. We broke into groups, and we did Frank Zappa. Like, we took a bunch of Frank Zappa songs. He gave us the option to choose which Frank... I think he told us which ones, um, whoopsie, too much there, might need to write, there we go. Um, he had a list of Frank Zappa songs um, for us, um, and then we got to choose which one we wanted to do. He broke us into groups, choose which one we wanted to do, and then um, it was just awesome. And then we made puppets, you know, we basically, or sorry, I've got a, too much color here. I need to wet this up. I got too much color going on. Let's see if I can get some of that off. Um, excuse me here. It's too wet. Trying to get the excess off. It's not too wet. It's not wet enough. Get that excess off. There we go. Um, but anyways, we did Frank Zappa. He um, gave us each broke into groups. Each group chose the Frank Zappa song. And then we created puppets and characters to tell a story. Yeah, so we storyboarded, created characters. Sorry, created, yeah, wrote, created, came with a story, storyboarded, created characters, and created puppets. I know the storyboard should have come after the creating characters part. But um, create a story with characters, maybe a little bit of a plot line based upon the um, song. And then from there, storyboarded it made our puppet, and guess what? Yes, we performed it to the song. And we performed it for, and we filmed it. We had to film it. And I can't remember if we filmed it for the rest of the class also, or, but we definitely filmed it um, as part of the project. Yeah, it was so fun. Um, he really liked my puppets. Well, my favorite, I made, a, I made the sun and the moon, and I performed with the sun and the moon. Ooh, yeah, that was, oh. my sun was huge. I was like, my son was huge, y'all. Um, <laughs> it was too big to fit in my closet. Because um, it was round and, f yeah, it was a little floppy. Um, the moon was cool because I had to repurpose some pants. I cut these old pants of mine. They were out of style. Stirrup pants were a thing back in the late 80s. But they were not a thing in the early 2000s. So, and I wasn't wearing them anymore. Yeah. I kept those pants for a long time from high school. You're right. From high school to going back to school the third time. Yeah. Yeah. So the moon became this beautiful. Yeah, the moon. The moon became. Um, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about my shadows here. The moon became. My pants became the moon. Yeah. I said it back because the moon became a. No. Moon did not become pants. The pants became the moon. And I had some. I think I bought fabric. And the moon was small. It was, I know that doesn't give you, here, let me do it this way. The moon was probably about this big, this big. The sun, yeah, it was. <laughs> and it had a big mouth that flopped. You almost needed two hands. I think I could do this with it. But yeah, the, moon, the sun was big. It was probably good, especially with the rays. Each ray was its own, in, yeah, was its own individual thing. Own individual thing. All right. Yeah, it was, it was a good class. It was a good class. Um, I wish I could remember what the Frank Zappa song was, but the song that referenced the sun and the moon, that I do know because I made them. 
for that song. But anyway, yeah, so anyways, Tim, that was his name, was an awesome teacher. Yes, I'm trying to see. Probably it's not going to activate the normal pencil, but I did add a little um, colored pencil. I think the colored pencils I have. Um, oh dear, I might need an eraser. Don't like doing an eraser thing. Um, anyway, back to. Oh yeah. So um, I think my colored pencils might be slightly watercolor. Because you can buy watercolor pencils, which means it's a colored pencil that can be activated with water. Um, I can't remember. If, um, and the ones that I've been using, the black, this black was given as I got it as a, in a gift bag for a reception that I attended. So, um, and I'd never used this brand before. So I, I they do break down a little bit um, that I've noticed. So that's cool. But, um, I don't know, um, if they truly are, let's see here, um, how dark is that, um, there we are, yeah, so let's see, so he does have shadow on this cheek here, um, but the light's coming from this direction, yeah, this way, so he does have some shadow, but, yeah, not his shadows on this side of the face, so right, right, which I barely painted in. Yeah, Let's see here. Oh, it's amazing how I'm making the shadows make him look. I'm more crazy. Um, kind of like the Igor, Doctor Frankenstein. Dude, sorry, I mean to make you look like Dr. Frankenstein, but oh well, that's life. Oh, I just noticed the time, it is 3.52, so my time is winding up. Anyways, thank you once more. I'll probably end in about three minutes. <laughs> um, and just add a few more details, but I want to thank you so much for joining me here um, for these art demos um, during the art market here in July and I'll be back um, for an art market in August um, I do have that information on my website my website is happyheartarts 1513.com that's happy heart arts yes there's an S, S there at the end ah happyheartarts 1513.com and um, yeah I have so I have the dates for the second um, market virtual market I'll be doing and I'll be doing art demos then um, also one on Friday and then I'll also be doing um, one Saturday and one on Sunday so but yeah the dates are on my website um, people can follow me on Facebook um, so, um, I, Jolie's off Jolie Collins. I have a Facebook page as myself, but I also have a Facebook page as Happy Heart Arts. Um, look for my swan. Um, both my, um, it's on my website, <laughs> but I also have my swan on, um, so if you watched any of the videos, there's a, my advertising videos for the market, there's a swan at the end. That swan is also on my website. And that same swan is on my Facebook page for myself. It's also on my Facebook page for Happy Heart Arts. Um, I used to have uh, Instagram, and then I didn't have Instagram, and then now I do have Instagram. I just started an Instagram account that has two things on it, or three things. It has one video, and then um, the images I painted from this, well, gouaches that I did earlier. And then the gouaches I did from this weekend. So three posts, um, eight photos, and one. <laughs> three posts, eight photos, and right, three, two posts with one, with eight photos, and then um, the video. So yeah, so that's Jolie Collins, eighty-eight, 
Oops. Yep, sorry about that. Jolie Collins 88. Um, yeah. So that's on Instagram. But like I said, there's not much on Instagram at the moment. But um, I am there. I'll be adding more as time goes by. I'll be adding this photo. A photo of this drawing there too. But, um, but yeah, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Um, yeah. And if you watch, oh, I want to post these on YouTube. So, um, yeah. You guys have a great rest of the day. And, um, oh, let me just turn this around so you can see what he looks like now. With a few little shadows on him. But that's what I'm going to turn it this way. Yeah. Love that crazy eye now, don't you? La, 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 la. Okay. All right. So thank you. Have a great and wonderful rest of your... There we go. Have a great and wonderful rest, rest of the day. And once more, this was Jolie from Happy Heart Arts. And you can visit me on Facebook, happyheartarts1513.com. And on Instagram, um, it's Jolie Collins 88. And oh, and I have a Tumblr. I have Tumblr too. I think it's Jolie EC. But yeah, anyways, I think I have the swan there too. So look for my swan. Um, yeah, swan bursting out of an egg. That's me.